hey what is going on guys so in this fourth and final part of this android kotlin beginner tutorial series we are going to add a background image to our app and we'll change all those boring buttons into these custom image buttons all right let's get started before we begin download these three image assets from the link in the description and then drag and drop them into the drawables folder Okay, now that we have our images, we will first add the background image to our app. To do this, go to the parent linear layout and add an Android background attribute to it and set it equal to the background image. Next, we are going to set the text color for the three text views to white and extract this text color into a separate colors.xml file. Next we'll go to the reset game button. Here we'll change its background color, set the text style to bold and add some horizontal padding to it. Next we'll go to our game board buttons and set their width and height to 80 dp. We'll extract this dimension resource into dimension.xml file and name it square button size. After this, we go to the drawable folder, right click it and create a new drawable resource file. Name this file custombutton.xml. Now in this file, we are going to write code to make our buttons look like this. In place of the selector tag, write shape and set its android shape attribute to rectangle. Inside the shape tag, create a stroke tag and set its color to 2a5bd6 and width to 5dp. This stroke would define the border of our buttons. Next create a solid tag and set its color property to 992a5bd6. The 99 here sets the opacity of the color to 60%. This solid tag defines the fill color of our buttons. Now let's go to the buttons and set the background attribute to this custom button drawable. We'll also add a margin of 2dp to each button. And finally, we'll change all these buttons into image buttons. Okay, we are done with the layout file. Let's now move on to the Kotlin code. Change the button to image button for the button array. Next, in the init buttons function, change these two button types to image button. After this, go to the on button click function and change the input button type to image button. Now in this function, we need to make a couple of changes. We need to change all the button.text to button.drawable. Rewrite the conditional in the first if statement to be button.drawable not equals null. Now to set an image on the image button, we write button.setImageResource and pass it the image. Now let's go to the check for win function. In the fields array, we'll remove the button.text and replace it with a getField function. We'll pass the button to this function and depending on the button image, this function would return us the character X or O. Let's create this getField function. Set its return type to a nullable character. The question mark after care means that this function is either going to return a character or a null value. In this function, we first create a variable of type drawable and set it equal to button.drawable. This can have null values and therefore there's a question mark here. Next, we create another drawable variable and set it equal to the x drawable. We do this using the resource method. 
Similarly, create another variable to hold the O drawable. Next, we compare the button drawable. If it is equal to the X drawable, we return the character X. If it is equal to the O drawable, we return the character O. And if none, we return null. Next, go back to the check for win function again and change all these empty strings to null. And finally, we go to the clearboard function and instead of setting the text of the button to an empty string, we remove the image by setting the image resource to zero. Okay, let's run this and unleash the sweetness. Alright guys, that's it for this video series. I hope this was as fun and educational for you as it was for me. Thank you guys for sticking around. This is Hardik and I'll be back with a new video next week. Until then, peace out.